Good afternoon. Welcome to the second Bureau of Business Research webinar of the 2020 Spring Series. Today we'll be looking at the results of the study, the economic impact of Nebraska military assets, an update for fiscal year 2018. This is a study that was completed through a collaboration between the UNL Bureau of Business Research and the Nebraska Commission on Military and Veterans Affairs. Today's presentation is sponsored by the Bureau of Business Research, which is, which is part of the Department of Economics within the College of Business at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. My name is Mitch Herrian. I'm a project director here at the BBR. Today I'm joined by Phil O'Donnell, who serves as the Military Affairs Liaison with the Commission on Military and Veterans Affairs. Dr. Eric Thompson, the director of the Bureau of Business Research, also co-authored the report. Before we begin the pre presentation today, I'd like to point out several features of the webinar. As you can see, we'll be using a PowerPoint to present the results of the study that we conducted. One feature of the webinar is a chat window where you can chat with other participants of the webinar. We also have a question and answer window where you can chat, where you can type in any questions that you might have for Phil or I. We look forward to any questions that you might have and you can type in your questions at any time. However, we will answer questions at the end of the webinar after the presentation has been completed. I'll now turn the presentation over to Phil who will provide an overview of the Commission on Military and Veterans Affairs and briefly describe the purpose of the report. Thank you, Mitch, and thank you for your active interest in military and veteran affairs in the state of Nebraska. Established in 2016, this 11-member commission strives to preserve and protect military installations across the state, attract new missions to military installations within the state, and serve Nebraska's military and veteran families. Members of the commission include the director of Nebraska's Department of Economic Development, the adjutant general of Nebraska's National Guard, the director of Nebraska's Department of Veterans Affairs, and three appointed members from each of Nebraska's three congressional districts. Additional members include the veterans program coordinator with the Nebraska Department of Labor, the chair of the state committee of Nebraska's employer support of the Guard and Reserve, the commander of the 55th Wing at Offutt Air Force Base, the commander of the 557th Weather Wing, and the commander of the United States Strategic Command. The key deliverable of the commission is its annual report to the governor and legislature. In 2017, 2018, and 2019, the commission contracted with the University of Nebraska-Lincoln's Bureau of Business Research to assess the economic impact of Nebraska's military assets. In addition to the economic impact, the annual report includes a summary of military assets in Nebraska and commission recommendations to the governor and the legislature. For 2019, the commission put forth six recommendations that have their roots in a 2008 Base Realignment and Closure Task Force report, which these recommendations were validated in 2017 and in some instances expanded in 2018. These six recommendations serve as the commission's recommendations for preserving and sustaining military assets and missions existing in Nebraska and serve as the commission's recommendations for actions which the state can take to encourage expanding such assets and missions. And this is all pursuant to Nebraska Revised Statute 55-606. Please know that the entire report is available on the Commission's website. Go to veterans.nebraska.gov under the Commission and Boards tab to find the report and more information regarding Nebraska's Commission on Military and Veteran Affairs. Nebraska is home to Offutt Air Force Base and a number of Nebraska National Guard facilities throughout the state. Additionally, the U.S. Army, U.S. Air Force, U.S. Navy, and U.S. Marine Corps reserve components and the U.S. Federal Department of Veterans Affairs have a presence throughout the state. The presence of such facilities throughout the state highlight the importance of these facilities to all parts of the state. Of note, it's hard to see in this slide, but Nebraska's National Guard presence includes 25 readiness centers and an Air National Guard base distributed across 23 communities. In short, this statewide presence has a statewide impact on the Nebraska economy. 
With that, I'll turn it over to Mitch to report our economic findings. Thank you, Phil. Uh, to begin uh, the description of the study that we conducted, the economic impact study, um, I'll just provide a brief overview of how we collected data uh, for the study. So as you see here, this table uh, presents information, and the, the personnel and the spending that takes place at Offutt Air Force Base and STRATCOM, the Nebraska National Guard and Air National Guard, uh, reserve components throughout the state, and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. In order to collect this information, for example, from Offutt Air Force Base, STRATCOM, uh, we obtained an annual report that that organization puts out each year that included numbers on spending and personnel, and we extracted information from that. The Nebraska National Guard and Air National Guard also puts out an annual report, uh, and from that report, we also extracted the information you see on the number of personnel and the spending that takes place uh, in the state. In order to collect information on reserve components in Nebraska, we made contact with these organizations and uh, through personal communications obtained information about personnel and spending that takes place here in Nebraska. And data on the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers was obtained from administrative records. So you can see here that off the Air Force Base and STRATCOM, 9,204 personnel uh, stationed there that were included in our study, $1.23 billion in spending that takes place. Uh, so that's, spending, that's the spending that will be included in our economic impact that I'll show you here in a minute. The Nebraska National Guard, Air National Guard, 4,422 uh, members and $271 million in spending. Reserve components, 1,982 uh, members and $77 million in spending. And the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, 850 personnel located at the headquarters in Omaha and $81.7 million in spending. I would note that uh, in terms of looking at the personnel and spending in relation to previous years, so fiscal year 2017, uh, personnel stationed in Nebraska was down just a little bit, while spending actually increased uh, just a little bit in Nebraska when you, when you sum all these uh, categories together. Another uh, component of spending that we looked at uh, for the impact study uh, was retirement spending on uh, retired uh, DOD personnel. So this information was taken from the Office of the Actuary, the DOD Office of the Actuary. Uh, you can see 13,636 uh, retirees receiving compensation in Nebraska for a total of $380 million uh, in payments in fiscal year 2018. Again, I would note uh, compared to fiscal year 2017 that the number of retirees receiving compensation was actually down just slightly, while the annual payments increased slightly. So suggesting that uh, a greater amount per uh, person, uh, per retiree was distributed. Another major uh, component of federal spending in Nebraska is uh, done by the VA. This table presents the breakdown uh, of VA spending, and this information is uh, taken from a spreadsheet put out by the VA each year. So you can see the greatest amount of spending by the VA uh, was toward compensation and pensions. Uh, next greatest was uh, medical care, uh, taking care of vets in Nebraska. Uh, other categories you can see construction, education of vocational training, general operating expenses and insurance and indemnities. Um, there are 48,723 unique patients served by the VA in 20, uh, federal, fiscal year 2018. Uh, this comes out to be about $24,685 spent uh, per patient, per unique patient by the VA in fiscal year 2018. Uh, one other uh, component of VA spending that's not presented here uh, is GI Bill spending, so support of uh, vets who return to college after their service or go to college after their service. Um, this will be included in, a, in an 
impact analysis here in a couple of moments. Uh, but GI Bill usage in Nebraska peaked in 2015. Uh, this is a trend that was similar to other states. And again, if you go uh, view the full report, you can see what those trends look like uh, in Nebraska and other states. So as Phil mentioned a moment ago, not just uh, the VA, but uh, all components have a statewide presence. Uh, this map presents uh, VA spending per county in Nebraska. Not surprisingly, uh, what we see is greater amounts of spending in higher, higher populated areas uh, around the Omaha and Lincoln metropolitan areas. This map gives you an idea of how that spending is distributed throughout the state when you look at spending per veteran in each county in Nebraska. So here you can see when we look at the data this way, the, the dollars are spread a little more evenly uh, on a per capita basis. So you can see in central Nebraska, the darker uh, shades indicate higher levels of spending per veteran. Uh, and you can see central Nebraska and western Nebraska uh, are some of the, some, you see some of the counties where the highest per veteran spending takes place. Um, again, this information is included in the full report uh, and we even go a little further in depth in some of that information. So, so that just gives you, again, those are some of the descriptive statistics related to spending that takes place here in the state by the federal government in support of military operations, retirees, and veterans. Taking all the information I presented to you just now, uh, we conducted an economic impact analysis using Implan. So Implan's a industry standard tool to estimate the economic impact of spending that takes place in states and localities or nationwide. So what we see in this table are the five major categories that we estimated economic impacts for. The first row, military bases and installations. So that includes OFIT, STRATCOM, National Guard, Air National Guard, and reserve components we see an economic impact of $2.34 billion on the state, supporting 24,954 jobs, and a salary, uh, total salary of $1.32 billion uh, spread across those 24,954 jobs. Next, retirement and pension distributions to re DOD retirees. We see an economic impact of $401.3 million. Uh, supporting 3,021 jobs and a salary of $123.5 million across those jobs. VA spending, an economic impact of $1.72 billion, 13,757 jobs supported, and a salary of $676.6 .6 million spread across those 13,757 jobs. U.S. Army Corps of Engineers spending, $160 million, 1,532 jobs supported, and a salary of $97.6 million. And GI Bill spending, $40.3 million of economic impact, 426 jobs supported, and $20 million in salary. And again, just to give you an idea of how these numbers look compared to last year, they are very, very similar. In fact, uh, military bases and installations, the economic impact of $2.34 billion is almost exactly what it was last year. Uh, slightly fewer jobs uh, in fiscal year 2018 than fiscal year 2017. Um, VA spending, the economic impact there as well was very similar to fiscal year 2017, um, as was the number of jobs supported and the salary. So not a lot of movement from fiscal year 2017 to fiscal year 2018 uh, that we saw. So trying to digest and unpack these numbers, I, th I think it's really important to place the economic impact in context. And you know, one of the strengths of working with the University of Nebraska Lincoln's Bureau of Business Research is its expertise in the Nebraska economy. And to place this in context, we, we leveraged and drew upon two previous bureau studies, 
Uh, for example, we, we looked at uh, a BBR study from 2015 on the insurance industry and a 2017 BBR study on the ethanol industry in Nebraska. And as you can see from our, our 2019 report, you can see how the economic impact of Nebraska's military and veterans affairs spending in Nebraska compares to those two industries. Um, and it compares both in terms of the amount and then also the number of jobs. And so it's, it's really important to use both the, the people who use the tools and use similar tools to try to make these sort of comparisons. So, and for the final part of the report is really the commission recommendations. So as you can see, a lot of these recommendations, if you go back and look at the 2017 and 2018 report, you'll see very, very similar um, recommendations promoted by the, the commission. Of note, I'd really like to take a look at uh, recommendation number four, uh, where the commission highlighted the University of Nebraska-Lincoln's National Security Studies Program, the work of the National Strategic Research Institute, and the U.S. Strategic Command's Deterrence and Assurance Academic Alliance. Regarding recommendation five, uh, the commission has noted consistent guidance from the Department of Defense to include the service secretaries and the Defense State Liaison Office. The Commission on, Recommend the commission on Military and Veterans Affairs also recommended that the legislature pass Legislative Bill 450. And this was a first in 2019 where the commission actually uh, made recommendations on two pieces of state legislation. So regarding recommendation six, and this is where the uh, second uh, legislative bill that was recommended, uh, we specifically looked to pass legislative bill 153, which is designed to exempt 50% of military retirement pay from Nebraska state income tax. Basically, this bill would simplify and expand Nebraska's current exemption. And like legislative bill 450, LB 153 is on final reading. Uh, finally, the commission assessed preliminary results from a, a lot of the strong efforts uh, to improve the quality of life for military and veterans families. And so you can look at the report and look at legislation that was passed all the way back to, to 2010. So, and with that, we'll move on to the question slide and we hope, hope you chat in some questions uh, for Mitch and I, so. As we, as we wait for questions, I will just point out the, uh, you can see the Nebraska National Guard helicopters, a UH-72 Lakota helicopter. Uh, we actually have eight of these helicopters in the state um, that were used extensively in 2019 for the flood relief and recovery. Um, we also have nine Blackhawk helicopters and six uh, Chinooks in addition to the eight Lakotas. It looks like there are a couple of questions asking whether the slides will be available. Yes, I believe we'll, we'll be sending electronic copies of the slides after the presentation. Right, I'd also like to emphasize, be sure to look at the commission's website on veterans.nebraska.gov and take a look at the 2017 and 2018 commission's reports as well, because these commission reports, they, the body of knowledge is building upon uh, prior year studies. And so, um, and Nebraska, we do a, a pretty good job of looking at this. Uh, I've had the chance to talk with colleagues in different states and, and look at their economic impact reports. I, um, so I think we have a pretty good uh, model and methodology uh, compared to other states. So I'll give it a, a few more minutes here mm -hmm. for potential questions. Do you have any additional thoughts or what, what stood out in 2019? Uh, well, compared to the, 20 to 7, 2017 and 2018 studies. The thing that always stands out for me are the special studies that are included in the, in the report. So what we presented today, the economic impact analysis, that's just a portion of the report. Um, so this year, one of the special studies that we did was a survey of county veteran service officers and kind of the, the views on their jobs and the challenges that they face uh, throughout the state. Uh, so I think there are some really interesting results that came out of that survey. Uh, not just the survey results, but I actually had email communication from a couple of those folks um, talking about issues they face. So, so I found that to be uh, very interesting uh, without going into too much detail. Um, so 
it's always, I guess it's also always interesting to, to see the trends, the GI Bill trends, for example. Yeah. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the, the usage of the GI Bill peaked in 2015. Then you see a dip in Nebraska and other states. And really, I, I think it's just a function of the demographics. Uh, probably after, I would imagine it has something to do with the uh, people kind of transitioning out after I, Iraqi freedom and during freedom. Uh, Phil can probably better answer yeah, that. No, there's there's sort of national trends in the usage. Mm -hmm. So, but I would highlight that uh, you know last year we passed Legislative Bill 486, which is the Active Duty and Post Secondary Education Act, and the University of Nebraska Lincoln was recognized uh, for all eight of eight criteria as outlined in that act. And University of Nebraska Omaha, Bellevue University, Central Community College out in Grand Island have all received national recognition and. Certainly hope that the post-secondary institutions continue to apply for you know state recognition uh, for all the great work that they do because those military and veterans success centers. I mean that's another way to help grow Nebraska if you can encourage a veteran to use their GI Bill benefits in the state and study study in Nebraska and then perhaps have an internship and then find a job in Nebraska and make a home in Nebraska. It really helps grow our state in terms of the number of people in the in the economy writ large. Mm -hmm. So we do have one question here. Are there any projections on GI Bill spending over the next three years? Okay, so I would just offer there, there will probably be two components to that. So on one hand, we, we talked about the demographics or the number of veterans utilizing the GI Bill nationally. That number appears to decline. So you know the goal is to have it decline less in the state of Nebraska, if you will. And in terms of the, the actual value of that spending and how you project that, um, I don't know if you have any thoughts on if you, we'd have to really check to see if the federal VA is changing the sort of, you know, dollars per veteran. Mm -hmm. uh, because if that number was to increase, then the spending in the state may increase even if the number of veterans mm -hmm. using the GI Bill was decreasing. Right. So Yeah, I would say GI Bill usage, it, you know, trends suggest that it would continue to decrease uh, over the next three years. But as Phil mentioned, you know, if something changes in terms of how uh, payments are distributed or something like that, then that might offset the, the decrease in the numbers of folks using that benefit. Right. So we're just, just making the differentiation between the number of, of veterans using the GI Bill versus the amount and value of that uh, mm -hmm. GI Bill benefit. So. Right. And we will continue to answer questions if they come in, but I would like to put our contact information up there for Phil and I. Uh, our email address is there and to our titles. Uh, please reach out to either one of us or both of us if you have any questions or want to request any additional information about the study. Um, also, if you'd like to stay in touch with the BBR and receive updates on monthly or periodic reports, you can feel free to connect with the BBR via social media. Uh, you can see LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter uh, accounts there for the BBR. And you can stay in touch by subscribing to the newsletter through the email on the screen. Uh, I suppose we can wait another moment for questions. Uh, I'm not sure any, any more will be coming through. Uh, but I think we'll just go ahead and conclude at this point. Uh, we'd like to thank you uh, for joining us today. We always, uh, this is the third year we've done this, so we always appreciate the opportunity to present the results of this study. Uh, always enjoy working with Phil and his team on the study. And we always learn a lot. It's always it's it's interesting and it's important work. Uh, so we really really enjoy it, and we appreciate everybody taking the time to join us today. Yep. Thank you. Thank you.